Hey guys, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. Today we're going to take a look at how to get a home bridge running on a Raspberry Pi using the brand new official Raspberry Pi image that the home bridge developers developed. For anyone that's tried to have a home bridge on a Raspberry Pi before, you'll know that this is a pretty long and intense task that is altogether very frustrating. But now that there's an official image, it could not be easier. It takes almost no time and I can't wait to show you guys how to do it. As always, there's only a few things you need. You need a, a Raspberry Pi, any Raspberry Pi, which is awesome. You need an SD card and you need a computer that you're gonna do all this on. I'll be using a Raspberry Pi with a wired connection and a MacBook Pro to sort of get everything up and running. If you're using a Windows machine, the instructions are just a little bit different. You can check them out on techtechandmoretech.com and there's gonna be a little bit more detail there. If you're using Wi-Fi to connect your Raspberry Pi to your network, then there's also gonna be some instructions on the written version of this video, which is linked down below. So the first step is to download the Raspberry Pi image and download all the necessary software. So let's jump to the computer right now. So this is the main Homebridge GitHub page. It's where all the instructions and all the files are found. It says download latest version. You're gonna click on that. It'll take you to this link, which will have the most recent version of the Homebridge Raspberry Pi image. Click on that and it'll download the file. It's about half a gig. So depending on your internet speed, it might take a minute or two, but then you will be good to go. As a reminder, all of these links are linked in the description down below, so you can always get to them that way as well. Now that that has been downloaded, we're gonna go back to that main GitHub page where they link the software that allows you to mount the image onto your SD card, basically making it like an installer. They recommend Etcher, so that's what I went with, and it's a very simple uh, app. It automatically detects which OS you're using, so just click on the green button to download it, and it should download pretty quickly. It's not that big of a file. Once it's downloaded, you can just double click on the installation file and install it on your machine. Obviously, this should only take a minute or two because it's a small app. I've already installed it, so I'm not gonna drag it into my applications folder, but that's how you would do it, and then that's how you would access it. After this, you would then go ahead and launch the application. So just launch uh, Etcher, as we're doing right now. Give it a second to load, and you got three very easy steps. Step number one is to select the image, so click on that. Select the uh, Homebridge image file that you just downloaded, select that. The next step will then just be to select the target drive, so this will be your SD card. So you're gonna select target, and then you're gonna select that media, so it's a 32 gig SD card for me, and then you're gonna hit flash. Um, on the Mac, you might have to type in your password because Catalina wants a password for everything, and now you watch a flash, it only takes maybe you know two or three minutes. Now that that is done, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take out your SD card and you're gonna put it into your Raspberry Pi. Turn off your Raspberry Pi first and then take out any existing SD card, place the SD card in, and then power it back up. This just makes sure that it does a proper boot cycle when it's loading up for the first time. Once you've done this, you're gonna go back to your computer and you're just gonna to go to homebridge.local in your browser. So if you go to homebridge.local, that is where basically you can control your Raspberry Pi locally. If you click on that link, it'll take you there. Like I said, it takes a minute or two for the Raspberry Pi to get booted. So you might initially get like a uh, you know, no server response, but then just give it a minute and then eventually you will be greeted by the welcome screen. This screen means that everything is getting up and running. It'll tell you which Raspberry Pi you have and how long it takes. Mine is an older model, so it did actually take about five minutes or so, but if you have like a Raspberry Pi 3 or the four, it should only probably take a minute or two. Once it's done setting up, you will it'll reload and you will have to log in. By default, the username and password is admin for both. Uh, you definitely probably wanna change that right away, but that is what it is to begin with. And then you are greeted with the Config UI X um, sort of plugin that's pre-installed, but it gives you this awesome visual representation of what everything looks like. So you can see uh, it's gonna check for updates, it'll see what's running, you can see your logs, you get your QR code in the top left, which is awesome, because it makes it really easy, and then you can also just check all your plugins. The developers recommend to check on the uh, no.js to make sure that, that is the most recent version, and I'll show you how to do that just now. So what you do is press those three little buttons in the top right corner, which brings the drop down. you hit terminal, and then from there you can copy paste or just type in this little bit of code to get into the sort of homebridge configurator, which is sudo space hb-config, hit enter, and you will get this little sort of 
really retro looking pop-up that lets you basically kind of do manual updates. Hit the first option, which is update node.js. It does a quick check and that's it. Uh, because this is so new, everything is already up to date. But if you were to you know, do this months from when it launches, you might not have the most recent version. And then to enter it, you just hit escape and you can go back to the homepage or status or whatever. And then from there, you can reinstall all your different plugins. You can even just look them up. Uh, you don't have to necessarily do any extra work. Super easy, super straightforward. And there you have it. That is all that is required to get Homebridge running on your Raspberry Pi. And again, any Raspberry Pi. I mean, that took all of maybe 15 minutes, including downloading and reading the instructions. I could not be happier about this. Again, it's the kind of thing that you only do once to get it up and running and it's easy. But the fact that the config UI is sort of preloaded, it's much easier to control everything. This is definitely something that I'd be much more willing to recommend to people that are less tech savvy, only because of how easy it is. As always, thank you so much for watching. It was a quick little video, hopefully to guide you that extra little step to get everything installed. As you saw, super easy, but sometimes just having that visual uh, sort of guide just makes things a little bit easier. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get to them as best I can. And if you liked that video, hit that like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. And until next time, see ya.